Hey everybody, welcome to Burr Tech. In this episode, we're going to be asking the question, should you use Flutter in 2021? The answer might shock you. All right, welcome back. For this video, I want to make sure you like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. So you've probably heard of Flutter. Flutter is a cross-platform framework that allows you to make cross-platform apps. Now, in the past, I've said that Flutter is absolutely amazing. And this was, of course, in the past. And of course, as you know, variables in the world do change. And some of the variables have changed on Flutter. And we're going to be talking about that today. So if you've ever tried to make a mobile app, one of the things that you know is that you have to make an Android version and an iOS version because they're not exactly the same. And there have been tons of cross-platform solutions in the past, none of which are very good, but Flutter was probably the most promising. In fact, we did a whole Kickstarter on how to make a really extensive app with Flutter. And I think that Flutter was actually pretty good at the time, but the things have changed with Flutter and we're going to be talking about that right now. So one of the hard things about cross-platform apps is that iPhone and Android do not work the same. In fact, they are quite different. Even if you have a very simple app, the particulars of the UI and the code behind it are actually pretty difficult. So you'd probably think that if Google was behind Flutter, it would put enough resources into Flutter to make sure that the user experience is seamless between iOS and Android. And they probably have put in a lot of effort, but the thing is, is that the user experience in between both of these isn't as good as it could be. One of the biggest problems with Flutter today is the iOS jank. Now, the thing about the mobile market is that you really want to cater towards the iOS developers. They tend to spend a little bit more money than the Android users. And even though they do spend more money on iOS, sometimes Android can make you more money because you get more users. It all depends on the type of app. But generally in mobile development, you generally cater towards the iOS developers. So there's been a lot of issues getting Flutter to work with Metal, Apple's rendering engine. And so far over the last few months, it hasn't worked out exactly the way that a lot of developers have probably thought. The problem is so bad that it's almost unusable at this point. So if you have a cross-platform framework that doesn't work on one of the platforms, it's not very good. So when Flutter came out, I was really excited that not only could you develop for iOS and Android, you could develop for the web as well. Because you want to make a web-based SaaS, that is software as a service, and you can deploy it to the mobile devices. And this was supposed to be really amazing, but it hasn't exactly worked out. Really, if you want to make a mobile app, you should really be asking the question, what business do you want to make? Because most of the mobile apps today just serve a business. So what you should do if you really want to make a software as a service app or application or just a software as a service website, do exactly that. Make a website first and if it takes off, then you can make the mobile app. Mobile app development is very expensive because if you do get a software as a service to work and to be profitable, you're going to have to make an iOS version and an Android version. As of today, I don't think there's really any good way around that problem because Flutter hasn't exactly lived up to its expectations. So if you want to make a SaaS website, you only need to look at Craigslist as a best example. Craigslist is incredibly simple yet incredibly profitable. I did a whole video about it. You can check it out right here. So again, if you want to make software, you should focus on being practical and not being technical. This is the number one mistake I see a lot of programmers make. If you're gonna make something, focus on the usefulness of the app versus the technicals of the app itself. Now, of course, if you wanna be a programmer working for a bigger company, being concerned with the technicals is good. But until that time, you need to focus and be more like an entrepreneur focusing on usefulness. Because if you do that, then maybe your app might take off and you won't need that job. So in conclusion, should you use Flutter in 2021? I think that the framework does need a lot more improvement before you consider using Flutter. I would use other frameworks and if you really want to make a mobile app, I would make either an Android app 
or an iOS app, depending on which one you have. If you're just starting out, I would work with that. All right, so that concludes this video. I wanna know your comments down below. Do you use Flutter? What frameworks do you use? Remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon instead, we sell our digital products down below. The more money you get for the content that you buy below, the more products we can make and the more content on this channel we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month, every single month. We release machine learning tutorials, web development tutorials, game development tutorials, and more. We're constantly releasing new products. Again, if you subscribe to Mammoth Interactive, it really does help us out because our goal is to get to 10,000 paid monthly subscribers. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.